Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to continue working on our main menu. Uh, this is part three of the series that we've done so far. And um, what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to take a look at the options menu and hopefully finish up with the credits menu, which is a very short uh, uh, little process anyway. And um, if you've missed out on any of this, you can go ahead and check it out on uh, putting on the Fritz 3D visualization, the previous two videos for the main menu, and then as well as the game itself, because again, as I explained on the previous videos, uh, this main menu is kind of tied into some of the blueprints on the game that I've been showing you. So this is really going to be uh, video number 22 out of the series, but it's the third part to the main menu. So it kind of stands alone. If you wanted to use it to kind of set up your own game, uh, you can take a look at let it look at it and I am getting a little bit more detailed uh, in some of the processes so that you can try to adapt it for your own game if that's something you wanted to do. All right so enough of explanation um, let me go ahead and hide some of this and get started on where we left off. So last week we finished up our last video not last week sorry about that so we started, uh, we did the start button, got into the difficulty buttons, getting our difficulty levels set up and uh, doing a back button. All right, so today we were going to work on the options menu and hopefully finish this off with the credits menu at the end. All right, so the options menu is gonna be a little bit more um, time consuming. It's not uh, terribly time consuming as far as uh, going through all the blueprints that we had to last time, but there are some things we're going to have to modify in our previous uh, game that we've done. Okay. And um, so we have to make some modifications to where the music works from and some modifications to the actual uh, blueprint that uh, our character has. Um, Actually, no, that's going to be when we get into the pause button, but definitely the music this time is going to have to be pulled off of um, from Bellica. So there will be another video that comes out later on um, for doing a pause menu as well, but that's not part of the main menu uh, series that we're doing right here. I will uh, do another video on pause menus and a video also on handling the end of the game. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what an option, again, is going to look like. Um, this is the setup for the options. Um, we're going to be casting it. In this case, I'm going to use a different method for casting to the, uh, uh, in our case, it's the BP um, wave game uh, instance that we did. So it's going to be kind of like this, okay? And uh, it'll be, this time we're going to do it in one event and we're going to just use it as a variable elsewhere. So that makes it a little bit easier. And we're going to go ahead and make all of these sliders, two slider switches and a couple of buttons here. Uh, this will take us to our game instructions menu, which I really hadn't talked about yet, but um, knowing how to play something is probably useful if you want to put in some details for your uh, game as far as that goes as well. So um, let's go ahead and get started then. Um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a widget for our options if you haven't already done so. So um, go back into your UI into your widgets folder. Okay. I have one already set up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Okay. And again, just like before, because my, uh, this, in this case, I'm going to use the um, options menu as the full background. I'm not going to put an image on the back here. I'm going to use an image of the um, options instead of a, a picture of the game player or whatever. So, Again, I'm going to pull in another image from the side here. Just click and drag and drop it in. And I'm going to put this at 00. zero. And this again is uh, 1920 by 1080. All right? It's going to fill up the whole size there. Our anchor is going to be our full screen choice there again. So pick it, lower right hand corner. We're going to name this our background image okay and now I'm gonna go into my main menu into where I have all of my textures stored for this and I'm going to find my options background which is this one here I'm gonna go back in find my brush so yours may be closed it should be open like that 
Right here is where the image goes. Hit the little white arrow there, and that's gonna drop it in. So this is an image, again, I made this in Photoshop. You can make your own in uh, any of those as well. And I realize now that my head's still in the way, so let me go ahead and minimize that out of the way so we can just focus on getting the job done. Okay, so we're going to use sliders and we're also gonna use buttons for this one. So the first thing we're gonna do is I am gonna just go ahead and throw in those two buttons real quick. They're gonna be uh, pretty simple and uh, this is gonna be a widget to a game instructions or a button to a game instructions widget as well. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in a button There we go. I don't know what I was looking at. All right, and now um, this uh, image is a little bit bigger than my previous image. I'm gonna use those same buttons I did before, but in order to actually fill up this space, this time is going to be a square of 150 pixels by 150 pixels. Okay. This one will be my game instruction. button okay and I'm gonna pick the yellow one for that and where did it go there we go all right and so again I want to cover these up so I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the last video I'm gonna use this in all three of these image Hit the little arrow there again, change from box to image. Hit the arrow key again and select image there. Okay, and then again, same sound when pressed is going to be the click on button. Okay, where do you go? Oh, there it is. Button high pitch. Not click on button. Button high pitch. Okay, and what did I do there? Oh. oh, I made that a border instead of an image. There we go. That works better. All right, and so this one right here, the very top one again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a kind of a dim effect to make it look like it's not been selected yet. Kind of dim it down a little bit. Something like that. Move it over a little bit, center it. Okay, and now same thing for the back button. I'm going to double uh, duplicate that one, and I see yet again I got ahead of myself. Select this first one, change my anchor back to the center, and then select this button here. Same thing, anchor it to the center, and this one. Center it a little bit better, maybe something like that. All right, and this one is going to be the white button for the back button. Let's go and change this. Say okay, so those should be set up, and now, um. Real quick, we're just gonna go ahead and go ahead and get those two taken care of for the graph, and then we'll get started on setting everything up for the music. We'll do the music one first. The the uh, SFX one is exactly the same process, except we're pointing it at uh, our um, sound effects instead. All right, so let me go ahead and jump on over to the graph with my. Ah, I see that I forgot to change that first, so I'm gonna go back. Select my one here that says game instructions again, and this one should say back button. That way we know which one we're dealing with. All right, I'm gonna save everything, compile it, save it. Now I'm gonna go over to my graph, okay? I'm gonna, with the back button selected, I'm gonna say on click, okay? And for the back button, zoom in again a little bit, again, Remember, it's remove from parent. All right, 
So we're going to remove from parent. Boom. Then we're going to create a widget. And what we want to go back to is our main menu. So we're going to select that and select main menu. It says create main menu widget. We're going to go out from the return value, type in add to, and it's going to be add to viewport. And there we go. We've got that one all finished up. Okay. Highlight it all, select it, type in back button. I'm just going to leave it gray. Okay. Next one we're going to do is we're going to select our game instructions. I'm going to press on click. Okay. And on click. Now I haven't actually created this widget yet. So let's go ahead and jump back over to the main menu. UI into my widgets. I'm going to right click again, user interface widget blueprint. Okay. And this one's going to be called W underscore game instructions. Oops. Can't leave a space. And I'll just type game instruct. Okay. So now um, we've got that widget made. Um, go back to my options here. And what I'm going to do just to save time, I'm going to select these three here. Control. Actually, I don't even need to do control. It's just control W down here. Okay. There we go. Our main menu, I'm going to change it from main menu to the one we just created, which is our game instructions right there. Okay. And that's all that needs to be done there. Okay. Hit the comment button, select it, hit C to comment. And this one's going to be called game instructions. All right. So now we've got those two buttons done real quick. Now there's nothing in this widget. This will be something that uh, we talk about. I'll just do a real quick demo here shortly. We can compile and save everything. Go back to our designer. Right up here, hit the little designer button. And what we're going to do is we're going to set our widgets up or our slider buttons up, okay? So we're going to click and drag a slider over here. And when we drop it in here, you see that it goes from right to left, okay? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to kind of change some things to get it to work the way we want it to, okay? And um, that's going to be done right over here, okay? Um, first things first is I'm going to anchor this one in the center. At first, I'm going to call this uh, what it is. It's our music button or music slider. Okay. And this music slider is going to be anchored in the center as well. And the orientation, we want to change the orientation right down here to vertical. Okay. So now... What we can do is we can start to kind of shape it where we want it to go. And kind of play around with the width a little bit here. Something like that maybe. And actually I think I need to go a little bit bigger on this because the slider image I'm going to use is a little bit bigger. I want it to line up correctly. And I may have to play around with this just a little bit more. All right. So now some things that we can do to kind of modify the slider. Okay. Um, the slider bar color, which is this one right here in the center, and the scale. Um, so for the appearance value, um, I'm going to give this a default value of 1. And what that's going to do is it's going to move that slider to a certain position. Um, down in here, which is all the way up at the top. But I'm going to change the max value from 1 to 3. Okay. And now you can see that it moves it right here to 1 third. So the slider bar is there. The slider bar color is this right here. I am going to select that and I'm going to make it kind of match the color of like a black, a black line to kind of make it look like it's... Um, kind of digging down into the like there's a hole there like this is a slider in the middle of my um, image there I'm gonna say okay all right and then um, let's see position anchors 
Okay, my step size, I'm gonna leave it, um, I'm gonna change that from 0 0.01 to 0.1. Okay. Um, let's see here. For the style, we're gonna hit the down arrow on the style. And I'm not gonna change this, any of this here, but I am going to change the thumb image. Okay, so normal thumb image is right there. Hubbard thumb image and then disable thumb image. We'll just turn those down. All right, so um, for the normal thumb image, I have made a image I'm gonna use back here in my textures, and it's this slider button here, okay? So I'm gonna select that, go back to the options menu, and find my normal, hit the little arrow there, and it should look like that. You can see that it popped in down over here, Okay, and let me see here. Now I'm going to, let me see here. Did I change this to image, draw as image? Yes, it did. I'm also going to do the same thing for this one, but I'm gonna give this a kind of a highlight of a yellowish color so that when I hover over it, it turns yellow. So it looks like I know which one I'm interacting with, okay? All right, the other thing I wanna do is I'm gonna change the width of the bar and I'm right down here towards the bottom. There is one called bar thickness and I set mine from two pixels to 15 pixels. Come on. Nice and make it nice and wide. Okay, so that gets the uh, slider all set up. Now, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that. So I'm gonna hit Control W and change it from Music Slider to FSX. So this will be the sound of my gunfire, buttons being pushed, spiders dying, things like that. And I'm gonna grab it and drag it and put it over here in the center as well. Try to line it up. Something like that, okay? And we can always come back and adjust the size to get the slider to function just a little bit better if we want to. All right, so now what we're gonna have to do is we're going to go through and get these two set up, okay? So I'm gonna go to graph, and I am going to go to my graph over here. So for the music slider, so we're gonna select the music slider here, and if we pull this over a little bit, we can see that we have some choices, right? What we wanna do is this is gonna be on value changed, okay? So we're gonna hit the plus button for on value changed for the music. And we're gonna get this right here, okay? And um, this is where we gotta get into uh, setting up our music and creating some master music uh, sounds and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and compile and save what we have. And we're gonna jump out of this for just a minute and go get all of that set up, okay? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, like I said, is uh, set up our music. So we're gonna go back to our content folder down here, and then we're gonna find uh, where you have stored your different um, music, okay? And mine are all in my sounds, okay? And um, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's jump back to content. We'll come back to that in a minute. We do, are going to need to find those. Make sure you've located where they are. But here in my UI, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click. I'm going to create a new folder. Okay. And I'm going to call this audio just so I can keep track of what that's supposed to be. And then in that audio folder, um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of um, controllers. We're going to... Uh, Double click, open the audio. We're gonna right click and under sounds, oops, sounds, um, we wanna make a class. We're gonna make a sound class mix, okay? And we're going to call this wave and we're gonna call it uh, underscore master mix. Okay, and we're also going to create 
two more sounds. We're going to go back in here. Sounds, another class. We want a sound class. And this first sound class is going to be, I'm going to call mine Wave Music because that's the music for my Wave game. You can call it music, whatever. And then I'm also going to right click, create one more of those and go into sound, sound classes, another sound class. And this is going to be my Wave SFX. Oops, SFX. X sounds. All right. And wow, I'm not sure what a wave cube is. Let's go ahead and rename that real quick. Because I am typing so well today. All right, so there we go. Now we've got those set up. And um, if we double click and open up the wave master mix, so the purple one, okay, what we want to do is right here under this, I'm going to create an array so under my sound classes i'm going to hit the plus button and then over here where this zero is i'm going to hit the down arrow maybe there we go and then right here where it says none i'm going to click that down i'm going to type in my name that i just made that which is my wave music and i'm going to select that and make that my sound class all right and um yeah we'll call that good for now so let's go ahead and save that Go back to my main menu, and this is where we're going to need to direct all of our different music to these different sound classes that we just created down here because we're going to end up pulling these out later. All right, so um, that's where we need to go into our content. Go to your sounds folder, wherever you have your sounds, your music. I'm going to start with my music one. I'm going to double click on my music, and this is my main music. I'm going to double click on that, and right here, okay, I'm going to down click where it says none. So under sound, class, okay, this is where I'm going to type in my wave again, because that's why I called it, my wave music, okay? And since I only have one of these, that's the only one I need to do that for, okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do is go in to my sounds, and I have some miscellaneous sounds in here. I have like a squish sounds, which is my uh, wave main character squish, I think this one is. Oh. All right, so that's my um, death sound for my character. So I'm going to go ahead and um, so I'm going to double click on this one. I'm going to hit down arrow on that, and we're going to type in wave again for that's what I named it, and this is going to be my SFX sounds. Okay, I'm going to save that, and now I'm going to go back in. Let's do a file save all because I have a feeling I've missed a few things. All right, so now with that, I'm going to go back into my other sounds and find my fully miscellaneous. This is that button. Um, I've, I'm going to go ahead and just show how to do it. I may undo this later on because I don't really like that button sound getting any higher. But um, just to show how it works, we're going to go ahead and do that. So this is for my button. Um, I also need my weapon sound to go higher. And um, this would be my rifle cue. Okay. And again, I'm going to change the class for my weapons, uh, wife, uh, weapon cue. So this is the, the gunfire um, that is on a loop. Okay. I'm going to save that. I could also do the same thing for the end fire, um, but it kind of makes it sound a little funky. So again, these are things that you're going to play around with as you're working on your game, and you're going to say, eh, oops, that's the wrong one. Is that really what I want, or do I want uh, to not have that, okay? So there's that, and now I should have a squish sound for my spider when it gets, I would think it would be in here. Oh, this might be it. Yeah, okay. And so we're going to go ahead and add that one too. All right. So now we've got all of those set up. And if you have other sounds, those are things you're going to need to adjust to. What we're doing is we're assigning them to these sound classes because the next step that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close all these out since we don't need them all open now. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the um, sounds for these Based off of the, um, based off of how we adjust our controller here, okay, our volume control under our options widget. So now I'm going to go back to my options widget, okay, 
and um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get ready to get all of that set up. Um, we're also going to have to change the way that we're handling the music, but let's finish getting the, the slider set up first, okay? So we're going to pull off from here, and we're going to set sound mix. Um, and it's going to be a sound mix class override. So that's why we set those up as classes right here, okay? And the value is going to be the volume here, okay? Okay. For the in sound mix modifier, that was the purple one that we set up, right? So our wave master mix, okay? And then the in sound class, those are the yellow ones for our sounds. Since this is the music slider, we're going to pick the one that is the wave music class, okay? And um, that is all we're gonna do for that, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this out. Okay. Okay, push uh, sound mix modifier, and we're going to push it to our wave master mix. Right? Now, the next thing we need to do is we need a couple of variables, but we don't need those variables here. What we need is we need to put them back into our... So we go ahead and compile and save this for a moment. We're ne we need to put those back into our game instance, okay? So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna right, we're gonna click on it, and we're gonna add a couple of variables for our um, volume and for our SFX, okay? One of the things um, I'm looking at here is we need to make sure that we uh, turn these and make these public, okay? And let me go ahead and Hit the plus variable here. And this first one, we're just going to call this volume. Um, I guess we can call it music volume. So we're very specific. Okay. And then we need another one. And we're going to open that one up. And we need another one that we're going to call as FX volume. Okay. And, or SFX volume. And we're also going to open that eye up as well. Okay. We're going to compile that. So I'm going to go to my main menu. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that we have a central control point for the sounds and the music. So that they're all um, going to be carried over from one into our... So the start when we first start the open menu. And they'll continue to be there um, in the game itself. Okay. So I'm going to go back into my content. I'm going to double click on my blueprints. I'm going to find my player character. And right now I have my music set up right here to play spawn at location and my music. Okay. I'm going to disconnect that and we'll probably come back and we will delete this later. But I'm just going to disconnect it for now and uh, just know that this is going to end up going away. Okay. And compile and save it. So now there will be no more music when we're playing. Uh, but we are going to do is we're going to now set it up so that it plays here in our game instance. Okay. And um, okay. So let's go ahead and first make a function. Okay. We're going to need a function in here. We're going to hit and plug in that. And we're going to call this play audio. Okay. And now we have this play audio little function here. Pull off from here, and we're going to create a sound 2D, okay? So create sound 2D. And if we hit this down arrow, it'll open up some of the things we want to control. All right, and then on the uh, play audio, so we're going to select this right here we're going to go to the input here we're going to click one and this top one is going to be um, an audio and we're going to call this audio okay and this is going to be sound
sound base is what we want. So this is going to be our base sound, and this is going to be an object reference, okay? So now we have that output. We're going to put another one in here, and this is going to be our volume. And this is going to be a float. And we're going to do one more because we want this to be persistent. So I'm going to call it persist. And we're going to change this to a Boolean because it's either true or false. Okay. So, and that is this down here. So we're going to go ahead and from our audio, we're going to select this into here from our audio. We're going to use this as our volume multiplier, and we're going to put this into our persist here. Okay. Now, another thing we need is we need a variable over here on this side for us to be able to set our audio. So I'm going to hit the variable. We're going to um, call this audio. And this audio is going to be an audio component. Audio component right here. And again, this is going to be an object reference. And we're going to get that set up like that. We're going to open the eye on that. Take this, we're going to set it, our return value, and we want to play. Compile it, save it. Hey, future Mia here again. Um, one more thing. When I ran through all this and I tested it at the end after getting off camera, I realized that uh, there was one little thing we forgot to do. Um, because we moved our audio from our character, now it's uh, external and we're not actually stopping our audio. Um, what happens is uh, right here we get this error. It says we get this little stop error and we click on that. What it does is it takes us to where we could created our handling the death of our character, damage and death. Right here, we are stopping this audio, okay? So what we need to do is this right here can now be taken out since we're no longer running our audio inside of our character blueprint is being run externally to our character. And we can also take this main music and we can delete this. And the other thing that we're going to have to do besides taking out this particular node is also going into the stop firing weapon. And we're going to have to do a check right here to see if we're firing so we don't get an error anymore because it's going to try to stop this firing sound here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in a branch, so control B, and then we're going to pull from here the is firing. And we're going to check to see if it's true. If we're firing, then we're going to stop this. We'll clear the weapon trace uh, function and spawn sound at location will all happen. Okay. So that should uh, fix any errors that you'll end up with that are kind of random. All right. And that'll finish everything up. We can compile it and save it. And now we'll no longer get that error. Um, at the end, if that was an error that you were experiencing, because if you'd followed along with what we've done so far, um, we no longer are stopping the music here. We're going to handle stopping the music uh, with our death menu. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure we get some uh, basic variables set up in our music. So we're going to go ahead and set our music volume to one and our SFX uh, variable to 1.2. And this is in our game instance. So right here, these variables that we set up in our game instance, we want to make sure we have some basic variables there. Now let's go ahead and go back to our options menu and let's go ahead and finish this out real quick. What we need to do first is we need to get uh, our variable set up because we're going to um, 
set our volume from here. So what we need to do is before we had uh, set up so that we could cast to and we did it individually. This time I'm going to demonstrate how you can do cast to um, all at once. And we're going to do this in the event construct. So basically when this widget gets constructed, we're going to pull off from here and we're going to cast to and this is going to be BP and we want to find our wave game instance. Okay. And just like before, we're going to go ahead and cast or get game instance. Okay. And we're going to promote this to a variable. So I'm going to hover over the blue one right here. I'm going to right click and promote the variable. Now we're going to set that. Okay. And what that has done is over here, we have as VP wave game instance. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as BP game instance to help cast to my settings for down here. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to get my BP game instance. And off of this, I'm going to pull off of this. I'm going to type in set. And we want volume. So set volume. Let's see here. There it is. Oh, music volume. That's why it wasn't coming up because I was being very specific. All right. So we want to set that. And now what we're going to set it as is what we've created on our slider here. So I'm going to grab that, double click, drag this down a little bit. Do it again. Get that set up like that. Okay. So now we have our music modifier set up. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is for my SFX slider, I'm going to do the same thing on value changed. I'm going to duplicate. So I'm going to highlight and make sure I select those little nodes down here as well. Come down here, control W to duplicate all of that. I'm going to plug in my volume here here, connect that there, pull this over a little bit, all right, and then um, change this from wave music to wave SFX sounds, okay, my master mix, and instead of music volume, This is going to be the SFX. We're going to set our SFX volume here. And connect all that up. Okay. Comment it. This is my music slider. SFX slider. Okay. Apply to children. Everything should be set from there. All right. Compile this. Save it. Okay. So from our main menu. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our main menu. And what we want to do is we want to go to our level blueprints. Okay. So we're going to open up our level blueprints. We did this before when we set up our widget to get our main menu widget to work. Now, what we need to do from here is add some additional um, controls. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do is we want to be able to set up our volume. So we're going to pull off of there. We're going to cast to BP. And this is where we're going to get our wave instance. Okay. And again, we have to get game instance. Okay. And the next thing we want to do is to be able to get our volume, what we set our volume at. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and um, get um, music volume.
And this music volume is going to be applied to all of the volume. It's not just going to be uh, to the music volume. It'll also be the SFX as well. We could get specific, but uh, we're not going to break that out this time because we're going to just get our audio playing to begin with. And then, um, so let's go ahead and pull off from game instance and we're going to type in play and audio. Okay. And that's what we want right there. So BP game audio. Okay. Is the target. And we're going to set this to our volume right there. And we're going to make this persistent. We're going to compile it. And, oh. Let's pull off from the music volume and play audio. There we go. Oh, I think this is what I forgot to do. There we go. I forgot to connect the target up as well. All right, so we need to connect the target up and we need to select audio. And our main audio is what we want. So with our, whatever your main music is, mine's my main music. We're gonna make it persistent. It would have been fine if I pulled off from here. I didn't have to delete that. I just got a little knee jerk reaction there. We can go ahead and save that. Go back to our main menu. Now if I hit play, we should have our music playing. All of our other audio should be working. And I don't know why I did that. Because the intent was to play around with our options. Again, these are off, but we'll come back and fix that. Okay, there's a little bit of a delay in there as we move that up and down. And we can fix that so that there is no delay, so that is instant, okay? Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. Hit back, hit quit. Our menu's working the way it's supposed to. Um, we'll have to take a look at the way our buttons are anchored. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix those, uh, that little audio issues. And um, let's see, we're gonna go to our sounds, okay? And then I believe, it's either in the sound itself or it's in so it should be main music and down here where it says visualization mode it says restart we want to do is we want to play when silent now what this does is that it's going to continually loop in the background all right um, but we're playing the music anyway so we're just going to go ahead and do that play when silent okay that'll keep it from kind of doing that restart thing so basically kind of pause and then restart it over so we're going to hit save. So if we go back into the wave master here, and yeah, here it is right here. So right here we have a fade in time. We're going to change this down to zero. And we're going to do a fade out time to zero. Okay. Okay. And the other thing we need to do to fix that fade, uh, that delay is uh, it's a fade in time is what it is. And that's actually back in our blueprints for our widget, for our options menu, right here, fade in time. Okay, we don't wanna have any fade in time, so we're gonna make that zero. And we're also gonna do that for this down here. And compile that and save it. Now if I go to main menu, hit play, options. It happens right away okay and if I were to bump this up go back whoa that's loud start easy and that's what I'm talking about we may not want that buttons included in the uh, special effects features there <laughs> I don't know maybe so but now you can hear the audio of the gun is much louder okay and that'll persist through the different menus and I want to finish up the main menu so we don't have any more of these to go. Okay, so we got everything set up for our options. Um, what we need to do is we need to set up the credits one. And the credits is really easy. And then also in the options menu, we need to fix the game, um, the game instructions as well. And let me see, go into my UI, go to widgets, and find credits. Okay. And again, this is going to be a uh, image. 
I'm going to put it zero zero. Okay, and it's going to be 1920 by 1080 again. Okay, we're going to anchor this one down here. This will be our background image. All right, now let's go find our background image for the credits. Okay, and go back to the credits one, put that in here. And it's pretty empty, and that's because um, I used a bunch of text boxes to put in all the names. And that looks like this right here. Basically, these are all text boxes. Okay. The only thing we need to do is we need to take care of this back button. All right. So, again, that's just a button. Okay. And that button size is, um, I think it's a little deformed on this image, but we're going to go with. Um, 95 by 95 just like before make it square I think it might be just a little bit off and we can modify that later but all right so now with that I'm gonna go back to my main menu the back buttons have been the clear button and I'm gonna go back here for this image the first one I'm just oh draws none that's why there we go all right so now um, for the second one down is going to be hovered over. It's going to be that. That's going to be image. There we go. It's also going to be image. The sound is going to be that uh, button sound. High pitched. Okay. And we're going to name this back button. Okay, and yeah. Good so far, so let's go ahead and go to graph. And in the graph, all we're going to do is select our back button here on clicks. It's going to be, and we can always duplicate it from the other ones and con uh, control C and control V to copy paste. Um, but just for practice, we're going to remove from parent. Okay. We're going to create a widget. Okay. And select the widget is going to be, uh, this is going to take us back to our main menu. And then we're going to add to viewport. Add to viewport. Okay, and there we have it. Comment it, back button. <laughs> All right, and that does it for that one. And the last thing we need to take care of was in our options menu. Remember, we have these game instruction button here. We haven't done anything with that one yet. So we're going to go to our graph. Okay. Actually, first we go to main menu. We're going to go into our widgets. And, okay, we do have our game instruction widget here. We'll double click and open that one up. And we're going to go ahead and make the widget real quick. And then we'll go ahead and get the functionality set up forward if we haven't done so yet in the options. Okay, so again, this one is going to be yet another image. We're going to zero it out. Okay, and then this is going to be again 1920 by 1080. We're going to anchor this in the center or anchor it to the main. And that was one of the things I forgot to do on the other one was anchor the button pilots so let's go ahead and jump over to credits real quick designer 
this one should be anchored in the center. And you may need to play with these and actually, yeah, I'm going to anchor it in the center. You could also anchor it on one of these sides as well. Compile that and save it. Go back over to the, what was I doing? I forgot. Oh, yeah, main menu. Going to go to our images, textures here, find my game instructions one, apply that. Okay, I'm going to set up a button here. Again, another back button. Okay, and this one is going to be, let's see here, I think it's 95 by 95 for the X and Y. We can always adjust later. Okay. And kind of center that a little bit. And pretty much the same as before. This one is going to be none. Find our images again. There. Image. Image. And you kind of get the idea that once you get a, uh, a setup, it's pretty much just repetitive on some of this with some slight variations, okay? And now we've got this button set up. I'm going to compile it and save it. Now we got to go into the graph. So what we can do is we're going to go back to our credits one here, go to our graph, and I'm going to select these, these. I'm going to control C to copy them, go back to my game instance over here on my button, which I failed to name. We'll fix that in a minute on clicked. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and just control V. Okay. We're not going to go back to the main menu on this one. This one, we're going to go back to the options menu. Okay. So we're going to fix that comment this and this is going to be our back button fix the name on that real quick okay compile everything save it this is where we can kind of do a run through see how everything looks um, let me turn that music way down and we'll go over this, how to fix this real quick. All right, so now game instructions takes us here and... Okay, there's the back button. Everything's a little bit out of alignment here. So we have to play around with getting these set up, okay? All right, so, um, and what that really comes down to getting those fixed is is uh, playing around with where the anchoring is and how the anchors work, okay? Um, right now I have everything kind of set up to be in the center there. And um, it should work with this. However, sometimes I run into uh, situations where the background image, when we center these, these don't necessarily uh, stay put. So what I'm going to try is I'm going to select this background image back here. I'm going to put that in the center also. I'm going to compile it. And um, the other one I was having issues, really bad issues with, was the game instruction one. Okay. And that was my bad for not putting that anchor in the center. And I'm also going to center this one as well. Since it's just these two images, they should uh, work well this way. All right, so now everything is staying put where it's supposed to. And that's pretty good. So let's take a look at the game options. Game option is working well. The button's a little bit uh, deformed here, and that has to do with the stretching of the image on the background. We can stretch this one just a little bit too to match. That's working. All right, so now we should have a completely working menu. The only thing I haven't done is set these two buttons up here on the difficulty. I'm not gonna go through that. Um, because again, those are uh, exactly the same as the others. The hard would be the same as the medium and easy, just changing that uh, uh, variable. And then the back button here um, does work 
Um, so anyway, that uh, should get you started. Let me go ahead and stop this real quick. All right, so um, with all of that done, um, this is our main menu. There is going to be another video, uh, hopefully it's only one video, um, dealing with the pause buttons. Uh, although there are several things set up on that one as well, so that might end up, I might break that into two just to make it shorter or just one really long one. And then, of course, there'll be the end, uh, how to handle the death screen, so basically a quick button and then a, another a start button, which will take you back into the entire start button main menu loop. And uh, I'll get those done over the next few days, uh, a week or so hopefully, and we'll see how all that goes. Um, again, um, if you want to kind of catch up with what I'm doing here, you can take a look at my YouTube channel, Putting on the Fritz 3D Visualization, and uh, kind of get caught up on just the main menus, or if you want to see uh, how the wave game is made, you can jump in and take a look at all of that as well. If you liked what you saw, please like the video, and uh, please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.